You know that situation when you want to shoot a scene with a screen inside the shot, but it doesn't look quite right because either there's too much light or your gear is reflecting on the screen. Or you could also want to change the content of the screen with something creative that needs to be done in post. Well, in this video, we'll show you how to make an advanced screen replacement using the Planet Tracker in DaVinci Resolve. Let's get started. Thank you to everyone who subscribed to the channel. We really appreciate your support. And if you haven't subscribed already, think about doing so. We are making the assets for this tutorial available to you. This includes the iPad sequence, a clip, and a special kind of marker that we designed in two aspect ratio, specifically for precise and partial tracking. You can download all this on our Buy Me A Coffee store page, link in the description. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. If you are working with our assets, the video files are in 4K, and you might need to adjust your project resolution or create proxy files depending on how powerful your system. Add the main clip to your timeline and go to the Fusion page. We're going to start by checking the sequence to see what we're working with. I play through, as you can see, we have a close up on the tracking area. The camera is pulling away, revealing the whole scene. We can see how tracking could be made difficult because the screen is at time only partially visible and this is where our spatial markers are going to be very helpful. Select the media in, type Ctrl or Shift space depending if you're on PC or Mac, type Plan for Planner Tracker. I'm going to move my nodes around to make it easier to work. Select Planner Tracker. In Inspector, change Tracker from Point to Hybrid Point Area. For Motion Type, choose Translation, Rotation and Scale. The Planner Tracker is tracking a texture rather than a particular point and you need to adjust the setting so it's matching the type of motion that you have in your sequence. Find a frame where you can see as much screen as possible. In our case, we're going to start directly at the last frame. Trace the tracking area around the markers. In Inspector, set the reference time and track to start. We can see that even if the screen is partially visible, the tracking is a success. And this is because of how we design the markers. Let's go back to the last frame and change the operation mode to corner pin. Here, place the corner pin corners roughly around the screen. There's no need to be precise. We are going to need to adjust it in a moment. We are actually going to have some fun by not only adding a full screen video, but a composite of different assets. Drag the picture into the notes panel and connect it to the plan tracker. We need to adjust those corners with a mask as the picture is not matching the rounded display of the iPad. Add a rectangle, connect it to the media in two, change the width and the height to one and the corner radius to 0.05. Let's check this. This is much better. Select the plan tracker. And now we're going to adjust our frame to make it match as good as possible. This can always be adjusted later. Okay. Set one. Okay, that's not bad. Let's zoom out. The darkest part of the UI shouldn't be darker than the black frame of the iPad, and we can feel that the whole UI has way too much contrast. We are going to arrange this with a color corrector. Select Media In, Control or Shift Space, type Color, and add a color corrector. Let's arrange our nodes. In the color corrector, go to Menu and choose Levels. Change the black to 0.48, and the midtones to 0.7. As you can see, a larger area is affected by the color correction and it's actually very simple to fix. Drag the rectangle at put to the input mask of the color corrector. And just like this, it's going to mask out everything outside the screen. We're going to add a frame around the screen to perfect the connection. Let's copy and paste the rectangle that we already have. Add the background, connect them together, and put the background output to the output of the color character. It's going to add a merge and connect them automatically. Okay, let's do a little cleanup so we keep everything organized and easy to read. 
with the rectangle selected, uncheck solid and add some border width. As we can see, the border is outside of the iPad screen. So we're going to adjust the size and I reduce the width, the high, roughly. We're going to zoom in to make the adjustments and to reduce the frame size to a minimum and just adjust the position and the thickness. We can add some soft edge to make it blend. Let's zoom out. And in background, drag the color picker to the iPad frame so we can match. Okay. Now this is going to make sure that we can blend together the different elements. Let's add the video. As you can see, we added a second tracking area. Even if in, in this case, we actually don't need to track it. This can be really helpful if you want to do some advanced compositing or even keying. Select the planner tracker and click on plus to add a second corner pin. Place each corner roughly around the area. Drag in the video and connect it to the new input in the planner tracker. Let's zoom in and precisely adjust our video era. Okay, let's do it. We're going to add a color corrector to make the video blend with the rest of the scene. Simply copy the first color corrector, select the median 3 and paste. As before, the color corrector is affecting an area beyond the screen. We're going to add a new rectangle that we're going to connect to the mask input of the color corrector. Change the width and the height to one. And just like this, we fix the issue. Next step is optional, but I'm going to add some extra bars at the top and the bottom of the video to give it a more cinematic look. Add the rectangle and the background that we're going to connect together and connect the background to the output of the color corrector. We're gonna make, once again, some cleaning into our nodes. Select the rectangle, change the width to one and the high to 0.05. I'm going to move it at the top of the video along the Y axis. Adjust the color to match the top of the UI. Select the rectangle, copy and paste. With the second one selected, move it down along the y-axis to the bottom of the video. It starts to look pretty good, but if you ask me, the UI is a bit too sharp and it's not really matching the rest of the scene. We're going to fix this by adding some blur. Select the plan tracker, control or shift space, type lens, and add a lens blur. Now this tool is very powerful and with so many controls, you can actually achieve a very particular look. For this time, we are going to keep it simple. I'm going to move this tool Place it here, let's arrange. We're going to add two keyframes to make the blur change when the camera is zooming out. One at 133, with the blur size at zero. And the second one at 218, with the blur size at 1.4. Now, the blur is affecting the whole scene. And even if you don't see it properly through YouTube, it is very important that you learn how to fix it. We need not only to add a mask to our lens blur, but also to make it follow the camera movement. I'm going to clean up once again my nodes. Select the planner tracker, change the operation mode to track, create a planner transform, change back the operation mode to corner pin, grab the planner transform, and connect it to the lens blur mask input. Add a polygon. Trace roughly around the UI. And connect the polygon to the planner transform input. Be careful to not choose the mask input in this case. Once again, this is very subtle, but you might find yourself in a situation where you have a lot of blur to adjust and to restrict to one area. For the final element, we're going to add the little thing that can sell the whole package. And what we're going to add is some sunlight spilling over both the table and the iPad. Let's add a polygon and trace a shape of your liking. 
hovering above the iPad and the table. Add the background node, clean it together, select white for the background color and connect it to the output of the planet tracker. This is definitely not convincing, but we're going to make it look a lot better. I'm going to delete this, move the merge node, save the polygon, add some soft edge. In my case, I'm gonna add some 0.06. And now, to make it blend naturally, select the merge node. And for apply mode, choose soft light. Look at this, isn't it beautiful? We just need to make it follow the sequence and that couldn't be easier. Let's move those two, select the planet transform, copy, select the background, paste, and that's it. Our whole screen replacement is now complete. And now it's time to check the final results. This technique is opening the door to so many effects. And if you have any question about the process or how to extend it for some crazy features, please comment down below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to check out playlist about the VFX and damage resolve. And we'll see you in the next video. See ya.